this is Achilles drill where nearly success gets simplified and welcome to my lecture today where I'll walk you through some common near anatomy steeplechase questions that can be thrown at you from the brainstem. Alright, this is one particular topic that we've been looking forward to from our earlier lectures and it's a beautiful thing that we are there right now and I really want you to walk with me to the very end, okay? So you should be familiar with this beautiful picture from our lecture on the inferior view of the brain and in that lecture we did emphasize on some common gyra around here we talked about the interpeduncular fossa around here and then we actually left out the um, brainstem right there we just identified the fact that this is the medulla this is the pons and then the midbrain is somewhere around here but in this particular class we'll be diving into this brainstem okay in details we'll be talking about it in details and yes it is obviously made up of the midbrain somewhere around here there is the pons right here and of course there is a terminal part of it called the medulla this medulla then continues downward as the spinal cord okay so let me get a better picture of this take a look at this right here and yes this is the brainstem Although the midbrain is not to define here, but the midbrain is actually somewhere here. This is the very big pons, and of course, this is the medulla. And you can see a number of structures have been labeled already around here. And these are structures that can actually be pinned in your steeplechase, and you'll be asked to identify them. The pons is right here, but the thing is, um, despite the number of structures can be pinned around here, around here, you'll be asked to identify them. Um, it's also important you take note of the different part of the brainstem as basic as it sounds there could actually be a question in which you be asked to identify these different parts as you can see in this sample up here okay this is actually a mid sagittal section across the brain let me get your orientation right obviously this is the frontal part and then we're having the occipital part somewhere around here this is the cerebellum and you can see the beautiful brainstem around here you can see some structures have been pinned here already and yes you can be asked to identify the structures obviously right here the one pinned a is the midbrain although above it right here is actually the thalamus that's a bit of the diencephalon around here but the brainstem is what we have here and then the pons is the one with this belly like structure okay it has a protruding belly yes you will recognize it and obviously we're having the medulla down here and the medulla at the level of the foramen magnum let me get a beautiful pen for that the foramen magnum is somewhere here and beyond the foramen magnum the medulla continues downward as the spinal cord so something as basic as identifying these different parts of the brainstem can actually present in your steeple chase as you can see right here and it's very important to take note of it but apart from that certain things can be pinned specifically and you'll be asked to identify those and those are the things we'll armor on in the course of this lecture all right there's a posterior view of the brain and it is very much notable with the presence of these two bombs you will see at the posterior midbrain of course you agree with me this is a midbrain and then what we have um, right here is the pons okay and certainly down here is the medulla all right so and you can see the cottage of the cerebellum so which is connoting the fact that this is the posterior view of the brain while looking at the brain from the back as i was saying it's very much noticeable by these two bombs especially if the midbrain is still intact there and if it isn't you will see this rhomboid fossa right here which is connoting the posterior part of the pons and the medulla we'll dive into those okay so let's take them one by one starting with the midbrain okay so although i would like to start with the front of the midbrain though let's take a look at it from the anterior aspect okay so this beautiful picture is here well it's not so defined but then you do agree to this the midbrain the pons and you can see some important nerves coming off it already and the medulla is down here let me get you a better picture so we can identify structures on the midbrain okay yeah i really love this picture all right so let's get our orientation right this is the pons and then above it right here is the midbrain okay so above the midbrain you will notice the likes of structures like optic chasm as well as the um the infundibulum suspending the pituitary gland they are somewhere up there occupying the interpeduncular fossa above the midbrain okay so the midbrain is a bit hidden here but yes it is actually right there and some structures can be thrown at you from this part okay from this midbrain one notable one is the cerebral peduncle 
The cerebral pedunculum is actually a protruding part of the midbrain, which is suspending the rest of the cerebral hemispheres. Okay, the two cerebral hemispheres. It is holding them. It's more like I imagine it as a pillar, two pillars suspending the cerebral, so the cerebral hemispheres, the two cerebral hemispheres. Okay, so and it's important you take note of that cerebral pedunculum right there. And then we are familiar with this already from our lecture on the inferior view of the brain, the mammary bodies. They are not directly structures of the midbrain, but then they are very much associated with the interpeduncular fossa. So, and that's where the phonics are terminating in. Okay, so those structures too can be pinned around there. But one other thing I still want to draw your attention to are some nerves coming off the midbrain, right? As you can see, one of them right here. This is a very beautiful nerve coming from the front of the midbrain, somewhere around the interpeduncular fossa, right here. Okay, and that nerve is actually the Oculomotor nerve, okay. Oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve number three, emerges from the front of the midbrain. Okay. We also have the trochlear nerve somewhere around here. This very small nerve. Let me use a better color for that. This very small nerve coming from the midbrain is also the. Um, it's also one important nerve emerging from the midbrain. Just that in its own case, it is coming from the back of the midbrain. You know. In the case of the oculomotor nerve, it emerges right from the front of the midbrain. But trochlear nerve will come from the back. That is, sometimes, just in case maybe a midbrain is presented at you, and then you are seeing those two bumps, okay, connoting the posterior part of the midbrain. Sometimes you could see one nerve probably just coming up from the back, okay? That's most likely the trochlear nerve, cranial nerve number four, okay? But the oculomotor nerve actually emerges from the front. Okay, it comes from the front of the midbrain. Okay, I think I should have a better picture of that somewhere down here. So, for example, as you can see in this picture, take a look at this nerve coming from the back. By the way, yes, this is the posterior view of the brainstem. We're looking at the brainstem from the back, and obviously, this is the midbrain around here, right? Okay, now the trochlear nerve is actually emerging from the back of the midbrain and it will find its way. To the front as a matter of fact it is, it is the only cranial nerve coming from the back of the brainstem other cranial nerve they kind of emerge from the front all right but in the case of the trochlear nerve it emerges from the back so take good note of that so and any of those nerves too can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. don't don't forget we are emphasizing on questions common questions that can be thrown at you in your steeple chase so it's very important we take note of those nerves so can we now say some other things as regards the posterior aspect of the brainstem, we already talked about this beautiful trochlear nerve right there. And yes, these are the tectum of the brainstem, so of the midbrain specifically. Okay, the tectum are very much associated with reflexes. Tectum, as a matter of fact, is made up of this pair right here called the superior colliculi. Okay. And then this inferior prayer right here called the inferior colliculi. Okay, I want. To, I hope you are, you do have a pen with you right there, and you're taking note of all this. Any of them can be pinned or can be um, yes, they can be pinned, and you'll be asked to identify them. So the superior colliculi is very much associated with visual reflexes, where the inferior colliculi is um, the two pair right there. They are very much associated with auditory reflexes. Okay, and. Um, one thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that this tecton right here, they kind of have a projection, not directly the tecton, but there is a part that kind of projects towards the thalamus right there. They are called the brachium. Okay, I should have a better picture. There is a superior brachium which is connecting the two superior colliculi, one on this side, one on this side. And they are connecting it to the lateral geniculate body of the thalamus. That's for the superior brachium. Where we also have an inferior brachium somewhere here, which is joining the inferior colliculi to the media geniculate body of the thalamus. Let me get a better picture for this. Okay, take a look at what we have here. Yes, the tectum are right here, the superior colliculus, the pier, the inferior colliculus, that's right there. But I want you to draw your attention to the brachium coming off from them. I'm emphasizing on this because they are common points for your Steve Chase question. Okay, the superior brachium is basically just connecting the superior colliculus to the lateral geniculate body. 
where inferior brain can be connected to the media geniculate body and they could be pinned in your stipulation. Don't worry, we'll still take a look at actual specimens and then we'll recognize these different uh, structures on a real specimen. Alright, that's that about that. Um, now let's go to the pawns. Uh, you do agree with me, the midbrain is here. Of course, the pons is the one right here. It's always having that is protruding belly, okay? So, and of course, the medulla will be down here. So, let's talk about this pons in details, okay? So, um, we'll still be using this beautiful picture and then we'll recognize some things around the pons. Get your orientation right. This is the anterior view of the brain from the front, all right? On the pons, numerous structures can actually be pinned. Of course, the pons itself, you can be asked to identify it. And yes, this is the pons. Uh, but apart from that, certain structures, especially the likes of this circles right here, okay? This circles in the midline of the pons is very important. That's um, the basilar circles of the pons, otherwise called the basilar groove. Or the sailor's groove, they mean the same thing, and it is very much associated with the basilar artery. The basilar artery runs somewhere around there. After the two vertebral arteries must have joined together, and then they will give rise to the basilar artery, which will run within the basilar sulcus or the basilar groove of the pons. So sometimes that groove right there can be pinned. You know. A student can just walk by it and the student will probably think they're just referring to the fact that they want you to recognize the pawns. But no, they might be specific in this case and they want you to recognize that this is the basilar circles of the pawns. So don't just jump at answering your questions. Also take note of specificity so that you won't end up writing a single structure multiple times and after the exam you'll be like, oh, I've written pawns up to five times in the course of this exam. No, they were not really pointing out you to identify the pawns. They were probably wanting you to be specific on a structure residing around the pawns or a structure associated with the pawns. So the question could be, what is the groove? Yes, basilar groove or the basilar circles. Or what is associated with the path paint and in that case your answer will be the basilar artery okay because that is the vessel associated with the basilar circles or the basilar groove around there okay and then I want you to take a look at this beautiful large nerve imagine from the pons do you know what the nerve is yes that is the trigeminal nerve okay the largest nerve and it emerges from the pons, okay? The trigeminal nerves are right there. And trust me, those structures can be pinned in your steeple chase, okay? You'll be asked to identify it. What nerve is this? The trigeminal nerve. So far, we've been talking about some nerves we've been encountering in the course of this lecture. The likes of the optic nerve and um, the olfactory nerve, all those ones are associated with our lecture and the inferior view of the brain. But coming down to the brain stem, and starting with the midbrain, we identify the oculomotor nerve. The trochlear nerve coming from the back of the midbrain, and now we're in the fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve, the largest nerve. Trust me, you will recognize that nerve. It's coming up from the side of the pons, and it is um, going to innervate structures around the face, around the head. All right, so take good note of it. So now, let me show you a quick one as regards this um, lecture on the pons. Take a look at this model right here. Although it's quite blurry, just bear with me. I just wanted to feature an actual specimen, but let me get your orientation right. These are the two cerebellar hemispheres. Um, as a matter of fact, um, it's continuing upward right here. This is the pons, and right down here, uh, the medulla, okay? The medulla is down here. And upward, we're having the midbrain somewhere around here. But you can take a look at the structural libid A here. A is pointing at the structure on the pons. Do you know what structure that is? It's actually a vessel around the pons. And do you know what vessel that is? That is, in fact, the basilar artery. You can see it's very much associated with the basilar groove of the pons residing around here. So if it's a student that is probably not being careful as regards specificity in question, um, the student might probably go ahead and write, oh, this is the pons. But they are not actually wanting you to recognize the pons here. They are asking you to recognize the artery pinned there, the artery around this pons, and that is the basilar artery, okay? So it's very important to take note of this. Can we now go to the posterior aspect of the pons, right? Take a look at this picture right here. Oh, by the way, I think we'll consider the posterior aspect of the pons together with the posterior aspect of the medulla 
later on okay but for now let's just move on to the anterior part of the pons the truth is the posterior part of the pons together with the posterior part of the medulla are collectively forming a structure called the floor of the fourth ventricle otherwise called the rhomboid fossa okay those structures don't worry we'll dive into it as we go on so now let's move on to the medulla right so yes the medulla is a structure forming the distal part of the midbrain okay this is the medulla above here is the pons and beyond this is, a, is the midbrain okay so this junction right here is actually a junction called the ponto medullary junction okay ponto medullary junction the junction between the pons and the medulla and some important nerves are emerging from there okay so we are looking at the brainstem from in front here it is an anterior view i want to identify some structures that could be pinned in your steeple chase around the medulla please follow me closely at this point okay there is this very obvious sulcus right here in the medulla that could be pinned and that sulcus is actually the anterior median sulcus of the medulla okay to the sides of this sulcus you will see some important elevations okay and those are the pyramids of the medulla okay these are the pyramids of the medulla uh, that's where we're finding we're finding the pyramidal tracts and the lights are residing right there within the pyramids okay so onto the sides of this pyramid there's actually still another sulcus you will encounter to the side that sulcus is called the anterior lateral sulcus although it's not it's not really um identified there's no label here but i'll show you a better picture i just want you to take note of the fact that we're having a sulcus right here in the midline to the sides of it are some elevations the pyramids okay and then we're having another sulcus right here called the anterior lateral sulcus two of them and then to the side of the sulcus we'll be having one other elevation called the olive right please follow me closely the olive are right there residing to the lateral part of the anterior lateral sulcus okay and the olive is very much as there with the olivary nucleus and um, a number of structures forming or contributing to the cerebellar pathway and of the cerebellar circuitry so they are residing right there within the whole leaf okay so i want you to take good note of those elevations okay they could any of them could be pinned it could be the pyramids themselves it could be the whole leaf on the side it could even be the sulcus okay so but they are very important okay and then the cranial nerve origins around this part too are important especially around the pump to medullary junction there is one important nerve that will arise directly from here around the pyramid that's why the actually the cranial nerve number six the abducens nerve let me get you a picture of this such that all i'm saying will make much more sense to you okay so follow me and let's take a look at this beautiful picture in which the different nerves have been identified with different colors so, so i'll walk them one by one the reason why it's important to take note of this is any of these different nerves could be pinned but with your um, knowledge, which I say with the fact that you're familiarized with their origins, where they're emerging from, you wouldn't have any issues as regards recognizing the nerve. We know from our earlier class that the oculomotor nerve, they're coming directly from the front of the midbrain within the interpeduncular fossa. The trochlear nerve are coming from the back. The trigeminal nerve directly from the body of the pons. And right now, I want to draw your attention to some three important nerves emerging from the pond to medullary junction let me get a better pen for that okay there are around here three pairs of nerve there is the abducens nerve cranial nerve number six fascia nerve cranial nerve number seven and then the vestibular cochlear nerve cranial nerve number eight okay so cranial nerve number six is the abducens nerve and it's coming from the pond to medullary junction but specifically around the pyramids okay the pyramids are these two structures why the likes of the fascia nerve and vestibular cochlear nerve, they are coming still from the pontal medullary junction, but they are emerging around the olive right there. Okay, so this is cranial nerve number eight and cranial nerve number seven, the fascia nerve. Okay, so abducens nerve, as a matter of fact, I want you to take good note of it. It could be pinned, right? It's very much associated with the pyramids. And then cranial nerve number nine, ten, and twelve are directly arising from the um, from the medulla, from the body of the medulla why the spinal accessory nerve cranial nerve number 11 actually comes from the proximal part of the spinal cord although it's a kind of slides upwards to the foramen magnum before it's now 
exceed out from the skull so that's why i still regard it as a cranial nerve but in recent it's actually coming from the spinal cord specifically the cervical part of the spinal cord so that's by the way and now let's talk about the posterior part of the medulla and pons proper okay and i refer them collectively as the floor of the fourth ventricle helia okay so the pons will be forming the region of this side somewhere around here and then the medulla will be forming the one down here okay so you can see the cut edge of the cerebellum right there such that we are made to see the floor of the fourth ventricle properly otherwise called a rhomboid fossa okay because it's kind of rhomboid in shape of course all right so let's take a look at this more simplified picture can you come down here and let's take it one by one okay i like to start with the mid circles right here there is a circles right here in the midline and that is the median circles okay it is the median circles within the floor of the ventricle and i want you to take good note of it that circles can be pinned and be able to identify it and also i also want you to take note of this elevation just lateral to these circles that elevation is the median eminence okay the median circles runs in the midline the elevation to its side is called the median eminence okay and as a matter of fact to the sides of this median eminence we we'll actually have one other circles called the circles limitance let me get a better pen for that okay let's just read circles limitance is right here and it's running to the sides of the median eminence okay so but i also want to draw your attention to this beautiful and very much prominent bone these are the facial colliculi one of them colliculus meaning the singular colliculi the plural so that structure is very much associated with the nucleus for the adducens nerve but then some fibers of the facial nerve are also around that nucleus of the adducens nerve so we still regard the colliculus as the facial colliculus okay so don't think because it is facial colliculus then the nuclei there is the facial um, the nucleus of the facial nerve is not the case here the nucleus actually residing there is the nucleus of the heart sense nerve okay so that's by the way um a quick summary we started with the fact that this is a median so of course to its side we have the median eminence and then to the side of median eminence we have the sulcus limitants and i'm drawing your attention to the fascia colliculus you can't escape this okay so i really want you to take good note of it because it's very much obvious all right and then two triangles i want to draw your attention to on the distal part of the medulla around here we are having the hypoglossal triangle here it's actually like a triangle and then distal to it we are having the vega triangle those structures are associated with the hypoglossal nuclei and the vega nuclei respectively okay so they are residing somewhere around the medulla down there okay so take good notes of it and then to the side right here are the cerebellar peduncles we have the middle cerebellar peduncle which is the largest of them all we have the superior cerebellar peduncle right here going upward middle is kind of going to the pons superior is going to the uh, midbrain and then the inferior cerebellar peduncle is what we have down here joining the cerebellum to the medulla the peduncle cerebellar peduncles are generally attaching the, the cerebellum to the brain stem okay so and they are right there with different colors this one may do the one right here is the superior and of course the one in green here is the inferior cerebellar peduncle finally i want to draw your attention to this terminal point of the um fourth ventricle at this region this region is called the obex it's not labeled here but i want you to write it down the obex is the point in which the fourth ventricle is narrowing into the central canal of the medulla as well as the spinal cord okay so it's that point in which um cerebral final fluid residing within the fourth ventricle will now go into the central canal of the medulla let me get another picture for that take a look at this the obex is very much defined here and this is it right here the point in which the fourth ventricle is narrowing into the central canal okay so let's wrap up things with some other structures around the posterior part of the um, medulla okay this medulla is such that it has the medulla has 
a an opened posterior part and then it has a closed posterior part so this closed posterior part let's talk about some structures around there yes there is also the sulcus that sulcus right here is called the dosa median sulcus I know there are a lot of sulci, a lot of elevations, but just ensure you watch this video maybe more than once. I'm sure it will stick, right? And then practice it, have a jotter with you there and draw this thing alongside, label them. Though I will still have a practice quiz and I will strongly advise you to take that quiz at the end of this video, okay? So, but just follow me closely for now, okay? So, the those are medians of course is right there. To its side, we're having these structures called the grassy fasciculus okay to his side we're having a pair of grassy fasciculi okay so they're right there and then to the side of this um grassy fasciculus we're having the cuneate fasciculus that's this elevation to its side right here we're moving from the midline and then we're traveling to the sides from the side we start from the midline we started with the dosa medians of course and then the elevation just to its side is the grassy fasciculus and then we are having the cuneate fasciculus to the side of the grassy fasciculus these different structures are just making up the different um tracts running in the dosa um spinothalamic tract of the um spinal cord coming all the way from the spinal cord conducting proprioception and all and then they are arising within the um, dosa part of the spinal cord they are collectively called the dosa colon media lemniscal system. We're not going into the function of them right now. We're just trying to identify them right here, okay? So to the superior edge of these different tracts, the different elevations right here, they terminate as tubercles. For example, the grassy fasciculus right here, when it gets to the superior most part, it terminates as a grassy tubercle, okay? Initially, it was a grassy fasciculus, but to the superior edge right here, it will terminate as a grassy tubercle. While the cuneate fasciculus as well, the one I represented as red here, will travel upward and then it will terminate as the what? To terminate as the cuneate tubercle. So just take good note of that. As soon as long as you are fine with identifying the different um, the sulcus right there, the fasciculus themselves, you can certainly trace them up. And then they will be just be forming the tubercles. The tubercles are connoting the, uh, the point in which the cuneate um, nucleus as well as the grassy nucleus are residing. Okay, they're just right there above. Okay, so that's that about that. Let's move on now and finalize things on this beautiful topic. Right now, we've actually identified a number of structures on the brainstem. We now want to start making use of some real specimen. Okay. And then we want to identify some of the structures we've been talking about so far. As you can see right there, the hopex is there, and that structures can certainly be pinned in your steeple chest. The fascia colliculi too, they are right there, those bumps. And then you agree with me that the sulcus in the midline right here is the median sulcus. Okay, this is the superior cerebellar peduncle, middle and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Okay, let's come down here and identify the structure pinned here. So if I'm to ask you, what structure is pinned B here? Let me get your orientation right. Someone is probably comparing. I can see this picture right. I can see it well. Oh, wait. Let me get your orientation right. Okay. So, this is the posterior part of the brainstem. We're looking at the brainstem from behind. Um, it's quite small, but yeah, take good note of it. Okay. Right here, we're having the two pair of colliculi. As you can see them right here. The superior colliculi, inferior colliculi right there. They are right there. And as a matter of fact, this is the floor of the fourth ventricle we just finished treating, otherwise called the rhomboid fossa. And down here, we can see the projection of the medulla. The medulla is down there. So there is a structure pinned here. Someone is echoing the answer already. What structure is pinned B here? Yes, that is the obex. So the obex can be pinned. It is more like the distamous part of this fourth ventricle, the floor of the fourth ventricle. And it is connoting the point in which the fourth ventricle is um, closing up into the central canal of the medulla and the spinal cord. Okay, so take good note of it. How about the structure pinned A here? Okay, let me get your orientation right. Yes, the superior collicula is right here. Then the inferior collicula is right there. There is a tract projecting from its side. Yes, that is the inferior brachium. 
inferior brachium projecting from the um, inferior colliculi and it is going towards the media geniculate body of the thalamus. Are we good? So that's that about that. Let's take a look at some other structures. Um, well, this is not so defined, but so if I'm to ask you what structure is tied here, this is the brainstem, and of course, it is continuing downward as a rod like structure. Yes, that is the spinal cord. You got it right. That is the spinal cord, and it can be tied and you'll be asked to identify it. Yes, it is the spinal cord. And then the another question could be what is um, the length of this structure? Let's get a picture, a beautiful picture of the spinal cord. The brain is right there, the medulla continues downward as the spinal cord. So the length of the of the spinal cord is actually about 45 centimeters. That's relatively equal to 18 inches. Okay, so something as basic as you having to identify the length of the spinal cord can present in your steeplechase. Okay, so it's 45 centimeters. And sometimes too, you could see some collection of nerves at the distal end of the spinal cord. Do you know what those nerves are? Those are the corda equina. Okay, corda equina. Let me get a better picture of that. Take a look at this. So the corda equina is like the distal end of the spinal cord. The spinal cord itself will terminate at the level of L1, but then you will still be seeing some nerves, some spinal nerves. Those spinal nerves are making up the corda equina. Okay, so and those structures too can be tied or pinned in your stipulates and be asked to identify them. It's simply the corda equina of the spinal cord. All right, so let's move on to other things we are leaving out. And as usual, sometimes, other than you having to recognize structures on a real specimen, that is a real brainstem, sometimes you could have a printed out paper and then some structures will be labeled already and be asked to identify those structures. Okay, as you can see in this case, although we're already having the answer, the question and the answer side by side here. So let's take them one by one. Of course, you do agree with me that the part labeled C here is what? The inferior colliculoid. Okay, the inferior colliculus. So we're having a right there very much as to do with auditory reflexes. How about the one labeled one here? Where if that line is pointing at the line in the midline, then certainly that is the median sulcus, which is right here. But if it was the elevation just lateral to it that was pinned, then that would be our median eminence. The reason why I'm saying this is I can't really be so sure if number one here is pointing at the line, the sulcus, or if it is pointing at the elevation to its side. But I'm telling you the real thing now, the sulcus is the one right here in the midline, and then to its side, we are having the media eminence, the projection of what? How about the structure labeled three here? Okay, that's actually the fascia colliculus. Very important. Okay, how about the structure labeled H right here? The one labeled H is actually the inferior cerebellar pedunculum. The one right here is the medial cerebellar pedunculum, and then media to its right here is the superior cerebellar pedunculum. They are all anchoring the cerebellum to the brainstem. Okay, superior cerebellar pedunculum we connect to the midbrain, middle we connect to the um, pons, while um, the inferior one right here will connect to the medulla. All right, so how about the structural libid X here? Do you know what X is? Obviously. X is actually our gracile tubercle. Gracile tubercle. You know, down here to be recognized as the gracile fasciculus. Or up here, in which it's having a bomb, it should be the gracile tubercle. And to its side, we'll be having the cuneate tubercle. That it wants to decide right here. About the structure libid 2, of course, 2 is actually pointing at the hypoglossal triangle somewhere above there. And then beneath it will be having the vega triangle down there okay so you can still reflect backward if you are still having issues with recognizing these different structures in the floor of the fourth ventricle how about the structure here um labeled five that's actually the sulcus limitans okay sulcus limitans is right here that line is the sulcus limitans and then away from the sulcus limitans we actually have the vestibular area Okay, can you try and zoom in here? The vestibular area is this, um, the rest of brain tissue lateral to the sulcus limitans somewhere around there. Are we good? So that's that about this particular question. You can see pause and compare these different structures. 
So let's move on. Is there anything we're leaving out as regards the um, brainstem care adult? And can we take a look at this? Uh, this is actually a cross section across the brainstem. Sometimes I told you printed sheet of paper could present in your steeple chase and you'll be asked to identify structures labeled on there. This is actually a cross section across the midbrain, specifically at the level of the superior colliculus. Don't worry, I should have a better slide showing both side by side. Okay, so we identify some important structures around here. Uh, foremost, the colliculus themselves could be paint, and obviously, this is the superior colliculus in this case, right? The structure labeled H right here is actually the nucleus for the oculomotor nerve. The nucleus for the oculomotor nerve, all right? So, take good note of that. And then the structure labeled 2 here. Is the red nucleus the structures making up the tegmentum of the brainstem? You know, the brainstem is such that it has a tectum and a tegmentum. The tectum are the two bombs of structures posterior to it the colliculi, superior and inferior colliculi, and then the tegmentum is made up of structures like the red nucleus and all structures contributing to the reticular formation. Right, they are somewhere in the middle parts of the midbrain okay the tegmentum so the one specifically labeled to right here is the red nucleus then i want to draw your attention to the b to the substantia nigra okay the substantia nigra is somewhere right here in the real brain you actually notice this substantia nigra it's darkened okay and that structure can be pinned in your steeple chest substantia nigra it's usually a darkened structure and a cross section across the midbrain okay you know it's the one secreting and producing dopamine so it's very important functionally very important and also structurally you will notice it it is a darkened structure on a cross section across the midbrain so that's that about that i think we're wrapping up things as regards the brainstem already we already identified these different structures and still a cross section across the um brainstem at the level of the superior colliculus and yeah this is the substantial nigra i told you about okay the red nucleus you will notice it as a gray matter okay they're right there as a gray matter and then even the cerebral archidot itself it could also be pinned that's the canal okay conducting cerebrospinal fluid through the midbrain okay cerebral archidot is right there. and to its side we see the periarchidota gray matter they are residing to the sides of the cerebral archidot take good note of those okay so there could be some bits of crossing right here to crossing between the rubrospinal tract it's happening right there and it is very much peculiar to the cross section of the midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus at the level of the inferior colliculus the bulk of the crossing you'll be finding will be structures associated with the superior cerebellar peduncle so let's wrap it up for now and um, that actually brings us to the end of this beautiful session on some common steeple chase questions that could present to you from the brainstem all right if you find the video helpful do well to give it a like if you're not subscribed kindly hit the subscribe button and get notified when future videos are uploaded on our channel videos that will certainly be helpful to you all right do it with the button i mean right now thank you